Good evening everybody and welcome back to Dante Arms Gaming. Um so after my last video um I went ahead, got all the fans in, um got all the wiring sorted out as much as physically possible. Um as you can see over here you can see all the fan wires and up here you can see um the rest of the wires from the fans at the top. Um I need two RGB um hubs from Corsair they're nine pound ninety nine each so um I've got them all in order so basically they're gonna come and then I can have all the fans linking up um for RGB which is quite nice and as you can see along the top there um I've got the Corsair Lightning No Pro um L E D strips and they're running all the way down here along the bottom back up again. Um the system itself is is quite good. Done a stress test earlier I got the CPU up to about eighty four eighty five um Celsius or degrees should I say um, yeah um, it did kick out a bit of heat um, both graphics cards get really hot if you're running them in Sly but that or SLI um, that's what the men are do um, but yeah overall good system as you can see here had to kind of modify the fan by one and two sorry there um, cable ties that fan when it gets there is about there so it just misses the front fans by a couple of inches. Um wish Enimax um would do longer um pipes for their intercoolers. Um or all in one cooler should I say. Um so I'm going back to cars. Yeah, um it would not be nice to have a, a choice, but it is what it is. Um so I've modified it. I think it looks quite nice because if that's right at the front, um then you're not gonna have a lot of you know, you're gonna have a lot of space to fill. Um the Corsair yet haven't released the four by one twenty fan tray for up here. Um which is a bit disappointing because I would like that have been out because um, then I could put the um caller up at the top. Um but it's things for the future, it's things to add and it's things to do. Um so yeah, uh, we're gonna go on and have a look at a uh Cinebench score that I did earlier and then jump into some heaven. Um Trying to get the two graphics cards to stabilise is a is a little bit difficult, um, but it is what it is. So um, we're going to jump on over and have a have a look. Um, so yeah, quite impressed. Um, loving the system at the moment. Um, as you can see, opened up Cinebench. I've got a eighteen hundred nine score, which isn't too bad. And as you can see, um, it will say the processor is running at. Um, 3.8 gigahertz it's not actually running at that um if i open up ryzen master um it's running around about 4.1 um they always open up this one le uh, letter basically amd process amd process sorry clones chipsets cpus apus and gpus um whatever are intended to be operated within their associated specification factory settings so basically don't overclock it and um screw your processor um, but as you can see 4.1 there um, running at 1.35 volts now I can get it to run at 4.2 um, but this voltage is going to be for the roof and I didn't potentially want to basically break a 380 pound uh, CPU um, so I didn't um, as you can see again clock speeds here is running at 1600 megahertz um, basically 30 well 3200 um, which is the capacity of these uh, RAM sticks. Um, so yeah, uh, go and jump on into heaven. As you can see, anti-aliasing on at 8%, tessellation extreme, quality is ultra. Um, now some games, for instance, if you're running um, something like ESO, um, it, is a, it is an ass, basically, ESO. Um, it doesn't really like anything, and you can't see what's going on on the other screen at the moment which is always handy so I need to come out of there and just wait for this thing to load back up so um, precision overclock from uh, EVGA brilliant tool you can use MSI afterburner but I prefer EVGA's precision um, I'm gonna go to one of my profiles and uh, just basically load it up and uh, yeah see what happens so I've got a slight overclock on here, plus 220 MHz on the memory, um, plus 120 on the uh, GPU, 
um, and about 50% fan speed. Um, this does ramp up a little bit more, um, which I'll show you hopefully on the on-screen display in heaven if it decides to um, show it. Which is it going to? I don't know. Because this thing does like to mess around a little bit. There you go. So, yeah, uh, clock speeds for these are around just over 1500 megahertz. Um, boost clock is around about 1750. And as you can see, I'm getting around about a 300 megahertz overclock. Um, temperatures on the GPUs there, they don't really go much higher. Um, like I said, the quality is ultra and the tessellation is where it should be, which is extreme. Uh, so I'm going to go on, I'm on a benchmark and just give this thing a bit of abuse. As you can see down here, max FPS so far is 182, minimum is 42. Now the minimum does drop, um, but as you can see the graphics are, are pretty good for ultra. Um, there's not a lot, a lot in it between ultra and high, to be honest with you, as I've noticed. Um, this is going to go through 26 scenes, um, and as you can see, the clocks up here have stabled slightly. They are in sync, which is nice. Um, they will jump in and out of sync at times if you haven't got a stable relationship between both GPUs, and again, temperatures are between 56 and 65. Mind you, this is air-cooled with a cooler in the middle, so bringing hot, cold air in through the front and then pumping hot air out back for the radiator. So um, I don't think that's too bad between 55 and 66. So yeah, um, really enjoying the system. Um, I will do some more videos on the GPUs themselves. Basically, EVGA's uh, GeForce 10, uh, GTX 1070. Sorry, um, all aftermarket graphics cards, GPUs, if you will, um, basically run off NVIDIA. NVIDIA makes the blueprint, they give them to the respective parties and then they go and stick their own design on them. Um, I prefer EVGA's design over the um, NVIDIA designs. The blower style, yes it's good, but there's just something about EVGA that I really, really like. Same as Corsair, um, AMD, um, pretty much a fanboy of those three to be honest with you. Gigabyte, really really like Gigabyte's motherboards. Um, so as you may have seen at Computex this year actually, um, Intel announced a 28 core 56 thread processor, which is brilliant, um, but they had it called from basically an air conditioning unit in the back room and it's going to be about £10,000 CPU is what they use in their servers, uh, 28 I think it was VRMs uh, on a on a motherboard, um, so basically it's their server CPU that they're going to try and bring to market, which is good. But we didn't really see its performance. And then AMD, a couple of days later, um, came out with their uh, 32 core, 64 thread um, Ryzen 2. So I'm really really looking forward to seeing what that's got to offer. Um, may actually go out and buy one, stick it in this board. Um, they are doing X399 refresh boards as well, so you can stick that 32 core 64 thread CPU in the current X399 motherboard um, with a BIOS update. Um, if it's anything like their uh, Ryzen 2 G or second gen or you know 2700Xs, things like that, where you have to have the processor already, then update the motherboard and then stick the new CPU in it, I don't think it's it's going to be much dissimilar to be honest with you, I think it's going to be the same, you have to already have a Threadripper CPU installed, update the BIOS, shut it down, take it out, put a new one in. Um, so yeah, I really want to get my hands on one of those, um, depending on money at the time. Um, but yeah, um, really enjoying the system as I said. Um, again, as you can see, minimum FPS was down at 36.4 so far, we nearly finished this test. Max FPS is at 210. Mind you, this is on ultra settings, and as you can see, the GPU's up here slightly out of line. 214.5. So, a few megahertz here and there is not really going to matter um, if one was running at 1594 and one running at 2000, then yeah, you've got a pretty much unstable system. And again, you need to run all sorts of different games to try and get the 
the best performance out of them really and one that's stable throughout every game as you can see um, just uh, finishing off here so we'll see what score I get with the um, ultra quality extreme tessellation I'm probably reckoning around about 3700 oh, there you go 3614 um, and as you can see their processor is saying 3.8 should really take that off um, and GPU at 4000 so yeah I have got the auto part on this so even though it is at 4.1 gigahertz it has kind of backed off a little so I'm just going to go and change the settings to high um, and uh, then see what we get at that point so again you should see a much better um, ratio in this one um, so yeah um, if there's anything that you guys want to ask then obviously please do just put a message on on my forum um, videos are not the best quality obviously I've got webcam up there webcam down there that was showing you the system um, how much does it cost to, to start your YouTube channel? Not really anything. All you need is a computer that you already have, webcam. Um, for me, three and a half grand on the system already. Uh, one 1080p HD webcam, which obviously you can see me on now, and then the other one's only a. Um, can't remember what the other one is actually. Let's have a look. I think it's 720p, um, which isn't brilliant. Um, Filmora, brilliant video editing software. I think I paid about forty pound for twelve months. Um, edit all my videos, make them your own. Um, yeah, it's good. And then obviously you need some games which can be costly. I play a lot of the Elder Scrolls Online, which I stream to Twitch. Um, currently for this system, I'm getting a round about sixty FPS during raids. Um, open world, about ninety to a hundred. Um, Another thing, going back to the motherboard on this, the the wireless um, connector is absolutely brilliant. I have just got a Cat6 cable back up and ran it around the room. I'm running fiber optic ball band, so I'm getting good speeds. Um, so yeah, costings you don't need a great deal. You need you need content, you need games. I'm downloading a couple of others. Um, was playing Fallout 3 the other day. Brilliant quality. Um, Really looking forward to to seeing what this machine can handle. I'm downloading the uh, Terra, and I think the other one is Warframe. Um, they look quite good on Steam at the moment, so I really want to get into them. Um, so yeah, this this pretty good computer to be honest with you. Pretty good rig. I like it. Got a lot more to do to it. Um, probably about another, I would say, seven thousand to, to spend on it. You know, another. Uh, mini ITX in the bottom or an ITX should I say not mini um, but an ITX in the bottom again that will be Threadripper and I probably will use the 1900X in the bottom and have the Ryzen Threadripper 2 in the top um, I need another 32 gig of RAM I might scrap all that and go 128 and bring the 32 gig down into the bottom Ward calling I have looked into it uh, fully customised water cooled loop probably going to be around 1500 quid um, might have to get a few more sponsors for that before I um, or any sponsors really before I even go down that route um, but like I said the only qualms I've really got with the, the, the 1000D case is I wish they had released all the fan trays when they released the the case itself um, and like I said in the videos um, the mini, uh, the power supply for the second system um, does go behind the current p uh, power supply for the ATX in the back. Um, I accidentally said the hard drive base. Uh, hard drive uh, base. Um, my bad. Um, and easier cable management really. Uh, there's quite a lot behind there to do with the cables, but you've got such a big open space. Um, there could be a shroud that goes on the inside just behind the fans that clips onto the case at the front just to hide those wires um, at the top you've got to run them all down one side and down the back um, and a bit more space behind the motherboard tray um, like I said I'm running three uh, Commander Pros in there I'm going to have another two RGB hubs for the fans um, hell of a lot of wiring underneath there 
I've then got three Lightning No Pro um, adapters. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit difficult. Again, there you go, a lower lower score with the high settings. So like I said, not much in it. I am going to go to medium and see what medium gives me. Um, again, not much. Um, K boost isn't on to be honest with you, which I could probably put on, but I'm not going to. Um, probably overheat them to be honest with you. They're running up at 70, so they're pretty much getting warm now, which is good. Um, so yeah, not a bad system overall to be honest with you. Um, uh, CPU Z is another good program to have open. Um, validate your software with them, um, and as you can see here. You know, tells you what I've got. Um, main board, again, got it's got everything you need to know. Cache, um, memory, as you can see, I've got all their graphics. I haven't really done anything with that memory. Um, so yeah, overall, really, really pleased with the system. Obviously, you don't have to go out and spend as much as I did. It's just because I, what I've got in there is what I basically wanted to put in there. I didn't go for a uh, pre-build. Um, by companies like Scan, Overclockers, Novatech, um, just a few in the UK, they do do pre-built systems that you can buy. Um, half the price of this actually, one of them was about 1600 quid, but I wanted to have Gigabyte, AMD, Corsair, and EVGA, I especially wanted the NMAX caller which does handle um, this CPU pretty well. Um, what you've got to be mindful of is when you, you are overclocking this Threadripper CPU, is there's a 20, I think it's a 20 degree offset. So, for instance, if you're running, sorry, Ryzen Master, you open it up. See the warning. Here it says it's running at 34, or 44 point, say 40. Um, it'll actually theoretically be running 60. Um, they don't tell you that. Um, um, AMD, I wish you would um, just run it at what it is and not have a 20 degree offset. Um, but again, those are things that come with time. Um, over Intel, pretty good processor um, for the money. Uh, you get a lot more with, for your money with AMD than you do Intel. Um, and obviously, since AMD have been bumping up their CPUs, going right, okay, we've got uh, our Ryzen CPUs out. Um, then Intel brought out some CPUs and then Ryzen go, oh yeah, we're bringing out Ryzen 2 um, with APUs built in, um, which is augmented uh, processing units, so you don't technically need to have a graphics card, although I would. Um, and then suddenly Intel go, okay, we're bringing this out, and then they go, right, we're going to lease a 28 core 56 thread processor. And AMD a couple of days later gone, we've got a 32 core 64 thread uh, processor. That is actually going to be coming tailor vendor, well, in a couple of months, actually, August, apparently, the um, the launch is going to be how much they, they are. I don't know. Can't speculate at this moment in time. Um, Intel's 28 core, 56 thread. As everybody saw at Computex, if you've been watching it, um, they had a pipe going from their case, obviously, over the CPU, into the back room, into an air conditioning unit just to keep it cool. So was it a fair test to say that they were going to bring it out? Not really. It is a server CPU that they have, which specially made motherboards for their servers. Um, and like I said, I looked into it. I think the price of one of these CPUs for their servers is about ten grand. Um, again, you know, if you've got ten grand and you want that, <laughs> then by all means go ahead. But I don't think it would be worth it. So, thank you for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe to my page. Um, watch me on Twitch. Uh, most Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I'll be doing raids with my core groups on ESO. And please do let me know what you think in the comments. If there's anything that you would want me to try and cover, um, obviously that I can cover whilst I'm here, then please do. And I shall see you all soon. Again, like and subscribe. Thank you.